Take a moment to imagine life before refrigerators, freezers, or airtight plastic packaging. No buzzing appliances, no ice trays, no best before labels. And yet, people were still able to keep food edible for months, sometimes even years. The secret wasn't technology, it was salt. Salt has been preserving food for thousands of years, long before anyone knew what bacteria were or why food spoiled in the first place. From cured meats and dried fish to pickled vegetables and fermented sauces, salt quietly shaped how civilizations ate, traveled, traded, and survived. Today we're going to unpack how does salt preserve food and uncover the science, history, and surprising chemistry behind one of humanity's oldest survival tools. By the end of this video, you'll never look at a pinch of salt the same way again. Let's get into it right here on History of Simple Things. To understand how salt preserves food, we first need to understand why food spoils at all. Food doesn't rot on its own. It's broken down by living organisms, mainly bacteria, molds, and yeasts. These microorganisms are everywhere. They float in the air, sit on our hands, and naturally exist on food itself. When conditions are right, enough moisture, warmth, and nutrients, they multiply rapidly. As they grow, they release enzymes and waste products that break food down, causing bad smells, slime, discoloration, and eventually, unsafe toxins. Moisture is the key factor here. Microbes need water to survive and reproduce. Take away their access to water and their ability to grow collapses. This is where salt enters the story. The main reason salt preserves food comes down to a basic biological process called osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of water across a membrane from an area with more water to an area with less. When you heavily salt food, you create an environment outside microbial cells that has a much higher salt concentration than inside the cells themselves. Nature wants balance, so water is pulled out of the microorganisms in an attempt to even things out. As water leaves their cells, microbes shrink, dehydrate, and eventually die or become dormant. Without enough water, they simply can't function. No growth, no reproduction, no spoilage. In simple terms, salt doesn't just block bacteria, it dries them out from the inside. Salt doesn't only affect microbes, it also pulls water out of the food itself. When salt is applied to meat, fish, or vegetables, Moisture moves from inside the food toward the surface. This moisture loss does two important things at once. First, it reduces the water available for bacteria to grow. Second, it creates a salty environment on the surface that is hostile to most spoilage organisms. This combination, less internal moisture and a salty exterior, creates a powerful preservation effect. It's why salted foods feel firmer, denser, and sometimes darker than fresh ones. You're literally removing water, one of spoilage's most essential ingredients. If salt is so effective, you might wonder why salted foods don't last forever. The reason is that not all microorganisms respond to salt the same way. Some bacteria, known as halophiles, actually thrive in salty environments. While most spoilage bacteria die or stop growing, certain microbes can survive moderate salt levels. This is why salt preservation often needs to be combined with other methods like drying, smoking, or fermentation. However, the bacteria that commonly cause rapid food decay, and many that cause foodborne illness, are highly sensitive to salt. Even when they aren't killed outright, their growth slows down dramatically, buying time and extending shelf life. 
Salt preservation isn't a single technique. There are two main methods people have used for centuries, dry salting and brining. Dry salting involves rubbing or packing food directly with salt. This method is commonly used for meats and fish. Over time, salt draws moisture out, forming a natural brine around the food. Traditional cured meats like bacon, prosciutto, and salted fish rely on this process. Brining, on the other hand, uses salt dissolved in water. Food is submerged in this salty solution, allowing salt to slowly penetrate while still controlling moisture loss. Brining is gentler and often results in a juicier final product, which is why it's commonly used for pickles and some cured meats. Both methods rely on the same principle, controlling water and microbial growth, but they produce very different textures and flavors. Interestingly, salt doesn't always aim to kill all microorganisms. In fermentation, salt is used to select which microbes survive. When vegetables like cabbage are salted to make sauerkraut, salt suppresses harmful bacteria while allowing beneficial lactic acid bacteria to thrive. These good bacteria convert sugars into lactic acid, lowering the pH and creating an environment where spoilage organisms can't survive. In this case, salt acts less like a weapon and more like a gatekeeper. It controls the microbial population, encouraging preservation through acidity rather than dehydration alone. This is why fermented foods can last for months and still remain safe, flavorful, and even probiotic. So, how does salt preserve food? By pulling water away from microbes, disrupting their survival, altering food structure, and sometimes guiding beneficial fermentation. Its simple chemistry, basic biology, and centuries of human observation working together. In a world filled with modern preservatives and high-tech packaging, salt remains one of the most effective and reliable methods ever discovered. It's proof that sometimes the most powerful solutions are also the simplest. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.